What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Gleese on Life. I'm Alex Gleese and today we're going to be doing a little bit of foraging. We're actually checking out a new spot here. I visited this spot once. It's a public game land area. Um, looked pretty good for foraging. Lots of area to explore. It's about two miles out to the water. So lots of land to explore. Last time I was here, I saw some mushrooms, saw some berries and stuff too. I don't know what we're gonna get into, but let's go see what we can find. So already I found some blackberries, but I think that they're pretty much done for the year. Maybe we'll find a couple of bushes or brambles that have some still on them. But you can see that there's just a few left and I've already, picked a lot so I'm not gonna probably pick too many of them unless I see like a big bush of them no, actually there's more than I thought here it's not too bad so we might pick some of these uh, it's kind of right at the entrance I'll grab these on the way out if I do end up getting them so just a little note I did say that I'm on a public game land um that being said i'm only foraging on public game land since it is summer if you're foraging or plan to forage on public game land i wouldn't recommend doing it during hunting season and if you really really want to you better be wearing that bright orange vest and hat to make sure that you're safe out here um yeah, foraging can be dangerous if you're not smart and careful about what you do. But uh, hopefully you guys are smart enough to make those decisions for yourself. Looks like some sort of old bridge or like railroad tracks or something here. Kind of interesting. So we did also just get some pretty good rain. It's been pretty dry here in North Carolina, to be honest. Not been great for mushrooms. Uh, so hopefully the rain is bringing them out. I'm a bit of a ways away from my house, so the, the climate here might be a little bit different. I'm really hoping. So fingers crossed that we actually find something. All right, I think I might see our first sign of something. It's yellow, but it might just be a slime mold. Let's go and check it out. Yep, just a slime mold. Nothing to see here. Okay, this is weird. Let's check this out. What is all of this? This used to be like a house? What the heck? I think this used to be a house. Huh. Very strange. All the rubble over here. But what really caught my eye was this. If I go back out on the trail, this is what actually grabbed my attention. It's like the top of the house. Huh. A little weird. Um, also found some mushrooms. Uh, some old amanitas, looks like. Not something we can eat. Yeah, kind of kind of cool, kind of strange. So, it's been pretty hard out here. I'm not gonna lie. It's hot, humid, but there's no mushrooms. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going, but it's not looking great. Not looking promising. So I've just stumbled upon what I believe to be a patch of shiso, which is not native to the US but it's kind of gotten out and kind of spread everywhere. Um, so let's check this out here. 
so you can see all this right here is shiso. They use this a lot in Asian cuisine. You probably had it with sushi or maybe some sort of meat, like Korean barbecue. It's extremely fragrant if you crush it. And this variety has a purple underside. I believe that's a pretty good indicator as well as these serrated edges. So I'm gonna leave it for now and probably grab some of this on the way out. Yeah. I also need to make sure that it actually is what I think it is, but I'm pretty sure it is. You can see there's just loads of it here. Just as far as you can see here, all of this is shiso. All right, I think we got our first mushroom here. Looks like it's seen better days. Check that out. Oh, big soggy bowl eat. Yeah. Oh, nasty. That thing has definitely seen some better days. It's got maggots all up in it. Hopefully, that's a sign that we'll find some around this area. Yeah, that one is <laughs> not fit for eating. Now here we've got something edible too. I believe that this is the invasive autumn olive. These small little red things, kind of like a fruit. And they have this massive seed on the inside. So they're really not great for eating but I know that people use them to make drinks out of and stuff like that. But you can see they have a huge seed on the inside. Yeah, I don't, I'm not too sure about using these for anything. Wow, here's another old house. Let's check this out. We got a chimney here. And then we got some rubble from the old house. Look at that. Wow, an old fireplace. That's really cool. Really not much left of the house here. I'm really curious to know when it's from, but uh, yeah, pretty interesting. Better than not finding anything out here. <laughs> uh, we'll keep searching. Well, we made it out to the end. Didn't find any edible mushrooms, but maybe we'll find some on the way back. Of course, I regret not bringing my fishing rod out here. I always make that decision whenever I'm going somewhere and I always regret not bringing it. Um, but yeah, we'll see if I can find something on the way back. I might grab some of that shiso, but if that's all we find, I might not do any cooking in this episode, but you guys will know here in a second if we found something else okay I, I think that we might have actually found something out here I saw these on the ground and I looked up and I believe that this here is a persimmon tree you can see here is an unripe fruit but persimmons they don't actually start to ripen up until um, kind of towards the winter in the fall so maybe we'll have to come back to this spot and harvest some persimmons. Kind of like a, a cool little treat here at the end. Okay, this is interesting. I just found a hole that leads to nowhere. This deep hole, maybe like a well or something used to be here back when that those people lived in that house. Yeah, pretty deep hole. I definitely wouldn't want to fall into that. Um, also, I realized after walking all the way out here that the walk was actually four miles. So, this trip is going to end up being eight miles round trip. 
so yeah, it's time to start the walk back to the car. Okay, here we go. I think we found something. This is a beautiful, beautiful mushroom. Holy cow. Let's check this out. Oh, popped it out. Oh, this is a, a blue staining. All right, let me set up the tripod here so I can show this to you guys. All right, so this right here is a bolete, which we can tell by this poor surface down here. And what's really cool about this one, I don't know the exact species, but you might already see it. When we damage this, it's gonna stain blue. Check that out. Super, super cool. I'll even cut off a piece of it here. We should see it stain blue. Oh, uh, maybe not. Maybe the pore surface on this one just stains blue. Either way, pretty cool. I'm going to take this home and try and identify it. Some of these are edible with the blue staining, some are not. So really be careful with the blue staining ones. There are even a few more of them. One there and a massive one over here. Holy cow, check this one out. Jeez. Oh, wow. Holy cow. Look at that thing. Seen better days probably, a little bit squishy. Still pretty cool. Well, I am drenched in sweat. And unfortunately, we didn't really find much of anything to eat or cook up. Um, so hopefully next week we can, or next time we're out, uh, hopefully you guys at least enjoyed tuning in and watching the trip out in the woods. Maybe you learned some things. If you're interested in the species of those bowl eats that I found, I'll try and ID them when I get home and I'll leave the names in the description below so you guys can check that out if you want. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next episode.